In today's episode, not only am I going to bring you the latest news from Microsoft 365, I'm going to take you through the all new Cloud PKI service that comes with Microsoft Intune. What does it do? And more importantly, what can it do for you? Stay tuned and you'll learn something. Hello everybody, how are you? Great to see you again, and I really appreciate you visiting my channel. If this is your first time, of course, you're always welcome. On today's episode, I thought I'd take a look at the new Cloud PKI service that's been out for just a couple of months now with Microsoft 365's Intune. It's actually pretty good, and I've had some requests from you out there. Uh, how does it work, and obviously how to set it up. So I'm gonna do that. On top of that, I'm going to kick off with some news. Uh, so sort of the latest kind of Microsoft news and also just looking at some of the updated and most recent new features, which come part of Microsoft 365 and Entra ID. Now, if you're planning to attend Microsoft Ignite, uh, Microsoft, uh, Tech Mentor Live 360 in Orlando, uh, which are both happening next week, of course, or Nick, the Nordic Infrastructure Conference, and I'm here in Oslo this week uh, to speak at that. And in my next episode, I'm gonna take you through what it's like to be uh, at a conference. So if you've never had the chance to attend one of these conferences, well, don't worry, I'm gonna take the camera and the microphone along with me, and I'm gonna do some interviews, and we're gonna take a look at exactly what goes on at these conferences. So stick around for that, it's gonna be fun. Uh, today's episode, by the way, is sponsored by Sprocket 365 and a little more on them uh, later on. So uh, just to mention, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you know what to do. Bump that uh, subscribe button up there. And if you enjoy my content, give me a big thumbs up. Uh, it does help the channel. And just to mention, by the way, that I also run my own Patreon site. Details just there where you can sign up and you can get access to full Microsoft courses, monthly Zoom calls and a heck of a lot more. So more details uh, below there. And if you've got any questions about this, or in fact, any of my uh, episodes, then of course, get those comments down below and I'll do my best for you. So I think without any further ado, let's jump in first of all with this week's news, and then we'll take a look at uh, deploying Cloud PKI in Microsoft Intune. So the first piece of news this week is it's conference season. So pack your bags and grab your swag. Hey, I know that guy. And head off to one of the big three conferences this week that starts off in Oslo with Nick, the Nordic Infrastructure Conference, which is always a great event, followed next week by two awesome conferences, Tech Mentor Live 360 in Orlando, which is always great, and you get the nice weather. And of course, followed by Microsoft Ignite. And this is gonna be a big show in Chicago this year with Satya Nandela and literally thousands of attendees. Great sessions and I'm going to be there at all three conferences and I'm going to be reporting back next week with the very latest news. So make sure that you stick around for that as it's going to be really cool. Okay, so for my next piece of news is one of my favorite features in Microsoft 365 and it's amazing how many people don't use this. Um, this is Microsoft Forms and it's gone through a bit of an upgrade recently. So I'm going to create a new quiz. So I'll just call this Andy's Quiz. And you can start, you can have as many questions as you want. Uh, I can choose a quick start option. Do I want multiple choice? Is it a date field? For example, you could be creating a form here. Um, but in this case, I'm creating a quiz. So I might choose, let's have a multiple choice question. So I'm gonna say, okay, what is the latest version of Windows called? So this is where you can add in your uh, various options. So is it version one? Um, is it version ME for Windows Millennium? Do you remember that? Windows 95? Or are you going to go with Windows 11? And obviously what I do then is I've got a little uh, tick here. I can select that as the correct answer. And you can also move them up and down with that little lever there as well. Now the cool thing about this is you can also insert uh, media as well. So if you want to bring in a picture or a graphic or a little video or something like that, you can do that. Uh, you can also put in a, a little tooltip there as well if you want to. 
You can also specify how many points this particular question gets. So there we go, I can create one question. Um, you can also dictate what kind of question it is. So are you, is it a maths question, multiple choice? Is an answer required, for example? And again, you've got other options here. You can shuffle them. You can create a subtitle and, and so on. So I can go ahead. I can bring in another question as well. Again, I'll create another uh, multiple choice question. And I'll come in here and I'll say, OK, uh, what is the name of the big tech conference happening in Chicago next week? So is it uh, Tech Mentor? Uh, I'll say, is it Nick or is it Microsoft Ignite? OK, and again, we all know the answer, don't we? So I'll select that. So once you've created your questions, um, that's it. You, you know, you've got your layout there. The next thing you might want to do is you might want to create a really nice kind of template here. And we have a few that you can choose from. So I'm going to say, yeah, do you want to replace this? Uh, with a template so there we go uh, again you can do quick edits and uh, things like that but there we have it so it kind of looks really cool doesn't it so you can see it brings in your questions um, and you can create your own kind of cool stuff there as well so once you've created your template the next thing that you can do is you can collect responses of course and you can share this out just like you would uh, in OneDrive. You can either have a QR code, of course, or you can have a link and then you can view the responses. The other thing that you can also do, which I love, is if you've created a, let's say, a quiz for the class, you can go and you can then present that quiz um, and go through the various uh, correct answers here. I love that. I think it's so nice. So Microsoft Forms, first bit of news there, very cool. So with Microsoft Ignite around the corner and lots of announcements next week on uh, Windows Server 2025, um, there's also going to be a slew of announcements on Microsoft Exchange Server as well. So Exchange Online is now the primary mailbox service uh, that comes with Microsoft. So both Exchange Servers 2016 and 2019 are being retired and they're being replaced by a subscription or SE edition which will be available shortly next year. Um, this will allow you to connect seamlessly to your mailboxes in Microsoft 365 with major improvements in terms of, for example, migration and overall connectivity and support. So if you're one of the old exchange timers who are using uh, still on-premises solutions, then this is something that you may want to take a look at um, because from next year, there will be no more exchange 2016 or 2019. Indeed, the end of an era. So for my number three, I'm coming here into the uh, Entra admin portal and I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to come into authentication methods. Now there's been loads of work here and also there's about to be a load of things re released uh, as Microsoft Ignite approaches next week. So watch out for that. Of course, we know that pass keys are now live and have gone GA, uh, which means uh, generally available. Uh, we also have the new certificate based authentication. Stay tuned. I'm going to talk about that uh, very soon in the, in the form of uh, deploying certificates in Microsoft Intune. That's so cool, by the way. So stay tuned for that. The other thing I want to show you is, of course, the number of reports. So we've had a number of improved reporting capabilities here and specifically in the activity area. So you can see here it shows me exactly what activity has been going on in terms of authentication methods. For example, are your users using the correct authentication methods? Um, how are users actually registering for multi-factor authentication? And uh, of course, um, uh, you can also, if you go into the settings here, uh, this is kind of cool. Uh, we have got this new uh, reporting suspicious activity 
and also system preferred uh, multi-factor authentication methods. So you can see that by default, this is kind of Microsoft managed at the moment. In other words, Microsoft want you to have multi-factor authentication. But this is quite useful for um, uh, you know reporting suspicious all activity. Again, Microsoft managed, but you can change this if you want to. So it is on by uh, default. It's on for all users. And this is quite nice if you've got like an E5 subscription, you're using Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, uh, you're using Sentinel, and you've got things like the uh, identity protection uh, connected here as well. This can be really useful for that. So, you know, some of those new reports are really, really nice. Um, I mentioned this some time ago as well. So in the settings area, um, if you've got things like Defender for Identity and you want to just extend that, um, we have this new uh, allow on password change uh, to reset the user risk. So, and it's amazing how many people don't use it, but needless to say, just a few nice updates. And as I say, after next week, I'm gonna be covering uh, some of the new Entra ID features that are about to be announced. Today's video is sponsored by Sprocket 365. Finally, create a robust knowledge base in SharePoint. For more details, visit them today at sprocket365.com. So for my next feature, I'd like to talk about Microsoft Intune. Now, Microsoft Intune continues to go from strength to strength. And just to let you know that with this license that I'm working on here, I'm working on an E5 subscription. Um, and they've also bundled in the Intune suite here as well. Uh, however, th some of these features can be purchased separately. So just to let you know uh, the license that I'm working on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here. Uh, I'm gonna scroll down into tenant administration. And the feature that we're looking for here is Cloud PKI. And this is so nice. The fact that we can uh, now generate our own digital certificates. Now, as you can see, I'm just using a trial subscription here and you can try this out uh, if you want to. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna create myself a new certificate uh, I'm just going to call the certificate Comtoso. And I, of course, you can put in a, a little description there. So the next, it says, okay, what type of certificate authority are you going to use here? So am I going to use a root? In other words, is this for not just Microsoft 365 or Intune, or is it going to be for everything? Or is it going to just be for issuing? Uh, again, if you're issuing, normally it would string off another certificate uh, deployment type. So for this demo, I'm going to say, yeah, I'm creating a root CA and you can choose the validity period. Now, of course, uh, you know, this is a bit crazy because uh, ultimately you need to pay your subscription. So you're going to pay your subscription for 25 years. Um, so um, I'm going to choose five years here as and it then you can choose the ex the and then you can choose the key usage and it's important to say what you're using this key for so uh, are you using it for authentication code signing is it for protection are you using ipsec of course so are you encrypting traffic between your networks um, are you using a smart card logon? So many of us use smart cards uh, traditionally. So it's really nice to see smart cards coming in. Of course, on a network, MAC address spoofing uh, is definitely a thing. So having a certificate there to authenticate and say that this is the genuine MAC address, I really like that. Of course, you can also create your own custom uh, reason as well if you want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say I'm going to use this one for client authentication, of course, because I'm using uh, Microsoft Intune here. So once you've selected your key usage, um, so I can then say, yeah, I'm going to choose this 
Uh, I'm going to say it's for client authentication. Um, you can choose other things as well. You might say I want to use it for email protection. So you can use it for a, a couple of different things here as well. You can see off it goes and it fills all that uh, kind of information and you can delete that. You can add to it if you want to. So then it says, OK, put in a common name. So I'm going to say I'm just going to use our friend Contoso.com uh, as an example. And the organization, of course, is Contoso. And in oops, make sure that you spell it right because you don't want to make any errors. Then the organizational unit. In this case, I'm going to say it's sales. And the country, of course, is the US uh, in my uh, tenant's case. You can put in the state or the province. So again, WA for Washington. And I'm going to put Seattle for the locality here. Finally, it asks you what level of encryption are you looking for here? So again, I would always go, this is SHA-3. Um, this is the latest uh, or the strong, certainly the strongest encryption. But again, it depends on what you're using the certificate for. So after clicking next, I can obviously add some tags. This can be quite useful for uh, searching, for uh, reporting, auditing and things like that. Again, for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to click on next. So now that we've created that, um, obviously just do a quick review and then I'm going to click next and off it goes and it will now create my very own certificate authority. So you can see it just takes a few moments just to come in. I'll just refresh my screen and you can see that everything is now working fantastic. OK, and obviously for deployment, uh, you will need to download a copy of the certificate. So this is the certificate re request. So I simply just download a copy of that certificate. I can open that file. And again, it's asking me, how do you do I want to use my password? So I can then say, yeah, uh, do I want to add this certificate? In this case, I'm using my Mac. OK, so now that that's been put in, I can simply click onto the login. And sure enough, you can now see my digital certificate has been added to my uh, login here. And you can see here the, the certificate is not trusted yet. I've not finished obviously setting it up properly yet. Um, but you can see it gives me all the details of the certificate, what it's used for. You get the serial number here, uh, when it's valid to and from. So this, of course, can be very useful for not just authenticating users, but also devices as well. And of course, making sure that the device is who it says it is, is a very important component uh, in defense in depth and the zero trust model. So there we have it, uh, just a little bit there on the certificate authority that you can now bring in into Microsoft Intune. How cool is that? So there you have it, deploying your very own certificate authority in Microsoft Intune. Very, very nice feature. On top of that, some really important news coming out of Microsoft 365 uh, and uh, enter that. Now, next week, as I mentioned, I'm doing lots of travels at the moment. So watch out for the next episode. I'm going to take you inside uh, a number of these various conferences. So if you've never experienced one, this will be a great opportunity for you. I've got some great interviews uh, lined up as well. All right. If you haven't subscribed, you know what to do. And if you've got questions and comments, as always, get those down below and I'll do my best for you. Thanks very much for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.